covers one fifth of the surface of the planet and is a major habitat. Water, temperature, and soil conditions are the major factors that affect life in terrestrial habitat. The living conditions on land depend on the geographical location of the place. In addition to this, day and night and seasonal changes are also factors which affect the life of organisms in the terrestrial habitat. Unlike sea, land is not continuous. It is divided into specific geographical areas. The living conditions are different in different geographical areas such as deserts, polar ice caps, etc. and are specific to a given location. These areas are well separated and organisms usually do not move freely from one geographical area to another area. As a result, organisms living in a particular geographical area have developed special character which help them to survive in that particular geographical area. Let us now see the various factors. Availability of water. Availability of water is the most important factor that determines the existence of life on land. This depends on the amount of rain or snow reserved by that geographical location. Some regions on earth receive rain throughout the year. In some regions, rains occur in specific seasons and desert regions receive no rain or very less amount of rain. Areas which receive sufficient rain will have adequate amount of water to support plant and animal life. Hence, these areas will have a great variety of plants and animals either throughout the year or during the appropriate seasons. Areas which do not receive sufficient rain are usually dry during most of the year and have very few plants and animals. Areas with sufficient water. In areas with sufficient amount of water, a wide variety of plants ranging from grasses to tall trees are seen. Most of the plants have broad leaves. Most of the forests are seen in these areas. As there is different vegetation, there will be a large number of herbivorous animals in these regions. Carnivorous animals which feed on the herbivores are also found in these regions. Areas with water scarcity. In areas where the amount of water is not adequate, the type of flora and fauna depends on the exact amount of water available. Tall trees are usually absent in these regions and small shrubs are seen. Most of the plants have a small leaf which reduces water loss by transpiration. Very few animals are seen in these regions and majority of them are carnivorous. More or less the same situation is seen in polar regions where there is no rainfall and water is in frozen condition. In these regions mosses, grasses and small plants grow only for a brief period in a year when the snow melts. No vegetation is seen in the rest of the year. As a result, very few animals, mostly carnivores, are seen in these regions. Adaptations in plants Plants and animals show several structural and physiological adaptations to survive in these regions. In areas with adequate water supply, no special adaptations are seen to conserve the water. However, in areas with meager water resources, plants and animals show several adaptations. As mentioned, plants tend to have narrow and small leaves or no leaves at all. This reduces the rate of transpiration and plants can conserve water. In plants without leaves, stems are green and carry out photosynthesis. When leaves are present, they are covered with a layer of wax-like material 
to prevent evaporation of water from the surfaces. Plants living in a desert areas have succulent stems and store water in the stems. If the water scarcity is seasonal, plants tend to reduce their growth in unfavorable season. Usually, some plants shed leaves to reduce transpiration and produce seeds during this period. Adaptations in animals Animals living in the areas with limited amount of water show suitable adaptations. Usually, these animals live in burrows where it is cool and moist. They are generally nocturnal, that is active during night, thereby avoid the daytime when it is hot and dry. These animals absorb more water from food materials. They eat food with high water content or fats. Fats when oxidized produce more water than carbohydrates. And these animals completely absorb this water. They also absorb from their urine and excrete urine either in a more concentrated form or in the form of a semi-solid. We can see this in birds and reptiles such as lizard. Their excreta have white and brown pellets. The white pellet corresponds to urine and the brown pellet to undigested food. These animals excrete their nitrogenous wastes in the form of uric acid. Uric acid is highly insoluble in water and even precipitates in the form of shining white crystals. Some of the animals living in extreme conditions of water scarcity do not excrete any nitrogenous wastes in their lifetime. Animals living in desert areas have dry skin covered with scales and spines. Animals living in conditions of seasonal water scarcity burrow into deeper layers of mud during summer months and reduce their metabolic rate. These animals do not come out, even for food, till water becomes available. This process is called estivation and is seen in the garden snail, that is Pila globosa. Temperature Temperature is another environmental factor that affects life on land. Environmental temperature on land varies with the time of the day, that is, night being cooler than day, and time of the year, that is, seasonal change, winter being cooler than summer, and geographical location, that is, places near equator are hotter than those away from equator. Depending on the place, the day-night temperature difference can be as high as 20 degrees to 30 degrees centigrade. Similarly, seasonal variation in temperature also depends on geographical location. Very minimal seasonal changes are seen in the temperature in the places close to equator. While in some of the temperate zones, this can be as high as 60 degrees to 70 degrees centigrade. For example, some places in central Canada have a winter temperature of minus 30 degrees centigrade and a summer temperature of plus 30 degrees centigrade. In polar regions, summers are of very short duration and the temperature never exceeds plus 10 degrees centigrade. In these regions, winters are very long during which temperatures are as low as minus 40 degrees centigrade, which is very common. Temperature also varies with altitude. That is, for every 150 meters height above sea level, the temperatures decreases by 1 degree centigrade. Hence the top of the hill is cooler than the low-lying regions and snow is very common on the top of large mountains such as Himalayas. Temperature and Physiological Function By influencing all the physiological processes, temperature affects 
life in a profound manner. As the temperature decreases, the rate of all the biochemical reactions and physiological processes slow down and may even stop. As the temperature increases, the rate at which these processes occur also increases. However, this increase is not definite. These processes occur at maximal rates up to a particular temperature, which is called as the optimal temperature. Increase in the temperature above or below the optimal temperature slows down or halts the physiological processes and the organisms may even die. Different organisms have different optimal temperature which is usually between 10 degrees centigrade and 30 degrees centigrade. However, there are some organisms which can tolerate extreme changes in temperature. Adaptations in plants to temperature. Plants living on land make suitable adjustments to tolerate temperature changes. In temperate regions where winters are very cold, plants shed their leaves just before winter starts. This reduces the transpiration and thus the water requirement of the plant. In tropics, plants shed their leaves before summer starts. In polar regions, plants germinate, grow, flower and form seeds in a short period of two months when the summer conditions prevail in these regions. There is no plant life in polar regions during winter. Adaptations in animals to temperature. Animals also adjust to temperature changes. Animals living in colder climates have a dense coat of fur or hairs and a layer of fat below the skin. These reduce the heat loss from the body. Some of the animals like hedgehog begin to deposit a layer of fat below the skin before the winter starts and sleep throughout winter. Fat reduces the heat loss and is also used for the production of energy and heat in these animals. The process of sleeping throughout winter is called hibernation. Adjustments made in animals to tolerate hot and dry weather have already been mentioned. Some of the animals migrate from one place to another when the conditions are not favorable. For example, Siberian crane flies all the way from Russia to India before winter season begin in Russia and flies back to Russia before summer starts in India. Let us now study about homothermic and polythermic animals. Animals like birds and mammals have the capacity to maintain constant body temperature irrespective of change in atmospheric temperature. Such animals are called homothermic animals. Sweating in hot temperatures and shivering in cold temperatures are some of the methods by which the homeothermic animals maintain their body temperature. All the other animals are called poiclothermic animals and they cannot maintain their body temperature at constant level. Changes in environmental temperatures greatly affect the body temperature in these animals. For example, invertebrates, fishes, amphibians and reptiles. Other environmental factors such as light and oxygen are adequately available on land. As they are not limiting factors, no special adaptations are seen either in plants or in animals for these environmental factors. Caves, especially deep caves, are the only places on land where light and oxygen are not available in adequate amounts. Special adaptations such as loss of eyes are seen in animals living permanently in the caves.